everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. I'm here with Cassandra Speaks. I'm sorry, <laughs> Elizabeth Lesser, and about her book, Cassandra Speaks, When Women Are the Storytellers. Um, I want to talk to you about um, dreaming and women having big dreams. So in the first segment, we were talking about imposter syndrome. And one of the things that I think prevents us from having big dreams, but um, I realized when I've talked and coached women, they don't dream big, you know, and, and there are all these reasons why they can't dream big. It's I have my kids, I have my husband, I have, you know, all these different reasons why they can't dream big. And actually, they're all valid reasons, you know, I mean, I think women have many communities that they're serving, but, but what have you learned when you've been in these women, um, groups of women, um, what are their dreams? What are, and, and how can we dream the biggest dream for us? Well, one of the reasons we can't dream big is that we've been told our dreams are second rate. It's not necessarily that we're not dreaming big. It's that these, what we dream about is often not what the status quo calls important or valid. Mm. So I dream, let's say, of a world where um, there's universal pre-K and that um, both fathers and mothers can take parental leave for six months. People are told, oh, that's a nice little dream. That's an okay dream, but that's, that's not high on the priority list. Mm. But you know what? That is a freaking big dream. Mm. Because it all starts with children to me. Mm. And women have been, that's just my dream. I'm not saying all women have that dream. Right. But a lot of the dreams that we know, damn it, are big dreams, real dreams. Like it all starts foundationally. Like maybe for your whole life, you felt the pain of the earth. You've known that climate mm. change is real because you actually feel it in yourself. But you've been told, women have been told from ever that we're hysterical. Mm. That if, you, if you're, you're too emotional, you're too sensitive, you're hysterical. When mm. actually, really what's going on is no one is listening to what I care about. Mm. I think, you know, people think women like, like lose their sanity quickly. I think it's amazing women are as sane as we are. <laughs> we have been told that our values are second rate. Mm -hmm. And that what we care about, you know, like it's women's literature, women's books, chick lit. Who said that? That, that, that gender is a genre. Like why is anything that's about relationships? And like, okay, you got me all fired up. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> what, like for years as a child, I would wonder why when we study history, do we have to learn the dates of wars and mm the names of the generals. Like, mm. why is that history? What else was going on? How were they educating the children? What did they eat? Um, what were the relationships between friends and mm -hmm. mates? And what happened with uh, sexuality? And mm. like, what, what, why isn't that history? Why <laughs> did we learn about that? That's a really good question. The values, you know, once I, I did a study of this. I took a walk through Central Park because I live in New York. And I had walked through Central Park, I don't know, a thousand times. And I decided I was going to make a study of every statue in the park. Mm. And I started where I often entered and there's a statue there. I never even paid attention to it. I looked at it. It was like 12 young soldiers carrying a bloodied comrade who had been shot. And it was limp and there was blood coming down. And I was like, that's interesting. And then I got to another entrance to the park where General Sherman is sitting on a horse, like an enormous, like 
six times life size, covered in gold plate. And there's an angel behind him and he's holding his sword up. And I'm like, who is General Sherman? Oh yeah, he, he so-called liberated the South, but he also burned down the city of Atlanta as he left. And then he became the secretary of war and he was the one who established um, reservations for Native Americans and would kill them if they didn't enter and then when that wasn't working, he killed all the plains buffalo so they'd starve. I'm thinking, why is he the gateway to the park? And mm. there are only five statues of women of like the 92, and one was Mother Goose, and one was Alice in Wonderland. Like, And so I thought, what if instead there was a woman giving birth? Mm. <laughs> And, and a baby coming out and bloody. And I said that to several people and they were like, ooh, that'd be gross. I'm like, grosser than a dead young soldier? Like, why do we value taking life and not giving life? Mm, that's a great I, question. I this storyline about what, what our dreams are. Mm. Like, my dreams are about life and how to preserve life on this planet for all of us and to make all of our lives rich and safe and able for us to express our individuality and to be diverse mm -hmm. and, and a garden, a return to the garden. But that scene is like garden, flowers, food, babies, you know, the smaller issues, women's issues. No, they are not women's issues. Mm. They are life issues. Mm. That's why I called my book, Cassandra Speaks, when women are the storytellers, the human story changes. That's the full subtitle. I want to change the human story to include warriorship. I'm no naive person. I know sometimes we have to defend ourselves. I know evil exists. But I don't want it only to focus on the evil, to focus on life and to call that heroic. Mm, beautiful. You know, I'm I, I'm I'm studying the Tao right now, and you know the there are these different cycles. So the hexagram one and two and sixty three and sixty four are the different hexagrams that you know that bookmark the Tao, which is about transitions and change, and the very beginning is about life. It's about heaven. It's about um, heaven meets earth. And when these two beautiful, you know, these few beautiful forces meet together, they create the, their, their creativity, their, um, you know, their expression. They are, you know, everything that manifests around us, every single thing, the Tesla, the plants, everything <laughs> is creativity, right? But, but it's interesting because when I, when I, when I translate what you're saying from my from stuff that I've been thinking lately, we don't think about, we think about 60, <laughs> Four and 63 and 64, dissolution, falling apart. You know, it's, it's that war, not the birth. We think about death and destruction, not um, life and creativity. So I, I love that idea of the dream being about, and I think, you know, there are plenty of visionaries, people with great, excellent ideas, but we don't celebrate those creative, Basically, these are feminine aspects, right? You know, if you think about the woman as creating and bearing, you know, children are all of our creations, they don't celebrate that at all. I do think we need to have a, <laughs> a statue in the park in Central Park. Please put a petition together. Oh, let's, you know, let's fund it. <laughs> you wonder why why would a young man at 21 buy a gun? and mow down people in a grocery store. Why would anyone, especially these young men, if we valued uh, caregiving and created a caring economy, 
where we funded and valued education, nurture, good food, helping young people find their voice and their purpose. And we were like, the most important thing in the world, people, is this. We, we wouldn't need as many police and soldiers and you know yeah. it, it it starts let's put our energy and our focus and our value there and not call that the feminization of culture as if it's some sort of weak thing it's strength that is strength that's sanity yeah beautiful i love that idea of of connecting it with our dreams because when i think of my dreams they're all creative they're not about destroying the system and, you know, destruct. And maybe those things have to happen in, in, in order for the new creativity to emerge. Because, you know, it's a balance of these two things. So I understand that, yes, war and destruction are part of the evolutionary path. But what do we celebrate and revere and what we dream as our biggest dream is it's leaning more in this direction <laughs> than, than this direction. War to me is a lack of imagination. There are many other ways to deal with conflict. I don't think war is evolutionarily necessary. Conflict will never go away. Yeah. But we yeah. can find other ways to deal with it. <laughs> there are many different ways to experience chaos and dissolution. It doesn't That's have to be necessarily exactly. killing other right. people to have it happen. It's just maybe you're right. Maybe it's just through a lack of imagination that we haven't come up with other ways of dissolving and changing the structures that have been there before. Um, I really have really cherished and um, enjoyed this conversation. Um, we've been talking to Elizabeth Lesser about her book, Cassandra Speaks, When Women Are the Storytellers. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you for having me. It was really fun.